You're watching HuffPost Live. I'm Ricky Camilleri. Fans of Michael Sarah, Tavi Gevinson, and Kieran Culkin, great theater, and of course the American treasure that is writer Kenneth Lonergan, are flocking to see the revival of This Is Our Youth on Broadway. The play, about three privileged young people living on Manhattan's Upper West Side in the 1980s, will be playing at New York City's Court Theater through January 4th. The trio joins us now to discuss This Is Our Youth. Hey guys. Hey man. Hi. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Uh, I love this play. Uh, I love Kenneth Lonergan. I put that in the top there. He's, I think he's an American treasure. Uh, did you guys know of Kenneth Lonergan before getting involved with this play, getting a copy of it? I know you did. You've been in a movie. Your brother was in his movie. My brother Rory was in his movie 12, no, more, like in 2000 or something like that. So I've known him for that long and been following his career for that long. How about, what about yeah. you guys? <laughs> well, I didn't know about him really until Kieran gave me a copy of This Is Our Youth to read, mm -hmm. something like five years ago. And then, so that was the first time I ever read Kenny's work, and I fell in love with it, mm -hmm. with the play and with his writing. And yeah, and since then I've, I've been a fan. I, um, I got, I didn't know his writing until I auditioned for this, and I felt really like cheated. Like I was <laughs> like, I should have known about this. Like if I'd seen Margaret, his movie, when I was like 15, it would have. Like, I, I think I'd be a more grounded person or something. Yeah, a much well, better that's, actually not, yeah. that's actually not your fault. That's the distributors of Margaret's fault. True. Yeah. Yeah. Um, his films are so, sp I mean, not his films, but his writing is so specific. He's so incredible at hitting mundane details in the midst of a really dramatic argument. Rather than sort of keeping the drama high, it's always like, we're really upset about this really emotional thing, but we're going to talk about the definition of this one word that's between us. What's it like uh, constructing those scenes with a director, having those arguments, having those, uh, building those, those moments of tension? Man, that happened so long ago that I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> we started rehearsing the play in May. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. it just feels like it's always been our lives. One thing right. Kenny, Kenny had us on was like, because the, the dialogue's really natural, it's easy to just sort of lean into this. Right. You know, you can just say his words and hit all the commas and do it, and but then like, natural. yeah, and then he'll go like, actually, this sentence means something very specific and so does the next sentence and like right. every moment means something, but it's easy to just sort of fall back right. and be like, I sound cool saying his words and I seem yeah. really natural. Yeah. No, yeah, totally. stuff, yeah. Well, the first time I read it, I was just so dazzled by like, oh, it sounds like real people. And then you, but if you play it that way, then it's just a, I don't know, then it's just like a play about three jerks. Yeah, <laughs> just, just talking and being kind of casual. Yeah. yeah. So how exacting is he uh, as a writer working with you guys? Because this isn't the first time that this play has gone up. It went up in 96 with, with Mark Ruffalo and, and Josh Hamilton, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. then it went up with Matt Damon and Casey Affleck at one point. So how exacting is he and how specific is it in regards to you as actors? Well, he very specific when it comes to his words. You know, if you miss that comma, he'll tell you that you know, the comma's there for a reason. And mm -hmm. it does make mm -hmm. it work better. But as far as, like, um, I've worked in other things in the past were like, one thing I was a little bit worried about is that maybe he saw something he really liked that maybe Josh Hamilton did or something that he would want me to do, like to sort of recreate a moment that worked, but he's, he's open mm. for us to be us up there. Yeah. yeah, he would say a lot of times in rehearsal when we would be just hashing something out and talking about something, he'd be like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. and he's like, you know, we wrote the play 18 years ago and he'd be discovering things about it with us. Well, with me especially, because uh, Kieran and Michael's characters are based on real people he knew. My character is kind of like a composite of different girls he knew over the years. And like there's one thing my character does that's very confusing and I remember being like, why does she do this? What's the what's that thing? Um uh and so Spoiler. Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> she I mean, kills my character. Oh. <laughs> Tommy could never figure it out. Just that's, like, my, that's actually my favorite scene, is when you kill Michael's character. When it's I just like start wielding a knife. Yeah. yeah. Um, Came out of nowhere. I was totally blown away. Yeah. You're just like, why? That yeah. was his move. Oh. But, um, but no, this but has I, no place in this naturalistic play. I love this. I know. You think it's all casual dialogue, but then. But, no, but, but I remember asking him, like, why does she do this? Why this like weird, passive aggressive, like, she's not really saying what she means, so I couldn't figure out what was behind it. And he was like, well, I don't know. Girls were always saying that. I mean, you're a girl, you know. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like everything else, he had like a really specific reason and a story behind it and a personal experience. And then 
with all of Jessica's stuff, he was like, well, I don't understand girls. <laughs> you tell me but, why you said that. <laughs> yeah. But that's incredible, because I think one of the constants in, in Kenneth Lonergan's work is how wonderful he is at writing women. Laura Linney, yeah. uh, Anna, pa Anna, Anna Paquin's character, and, and Margaret, your character, in this play, he's incredible at writing women for someone who purports to know nothing about them. It's almost a Socratic way of writing women. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, for being so like, um, I don't know, you're a girl. He's also <laughs> like, it's clear that whichever women were confusing him, he listened to them mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot. Uh, talk to me about what the play simply is about, which is about these characters in their early 20s really sort of coming to terms with the privilege that they have as sort of white people in America living in, in, in Manhattan. How did that resonate with you? What about that resonated with you? I think um, when I first read it, I came at it from that, like from the outside, like I was like, okay, well, they're like these rich kids in New York and it's the 80s and they talk a bit about Reagan and they talk a bit about their parents in the 60s. But I found that in actually, you know, be, it's maybe that external stuff would be more important if I were directing it or something. But I found that when it came to just trying to like be in the moment and be in a scene, um, having that like big picture, like I could only think about like, you know, her life and her emotions and mm -hmm. she doesn't have that perspective. Right. But what do you think about the big picture of the of of the play? I mean, if you weren't performing it all the time, and as just a reader, I mean, you had said I believe somewhere that you kept the play in your back pocket. All I the time still do. Years, you should right? see. I still have my copy. It's torn into like eight different pieces. I'm, I love it. But I I always up until maybe this experience had a hard time really articulating what I loved about it. It was just something that I connected to and I found really familiar and loved. But um, what I could say, I sort of found out doing this production that more or less what it's about is sort of that step into adulthood that a lot of people, I'm, I know I'm, I'm 32 years old now, so there's a lot of people my age that are full adults and I look at them and go, what the <laughs> hell is wrong with me? Or the opposite, there, there are these, um, like the moments where you just sort of take into that next step where your childhood is behind you and you're moving on into your adult life. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's happening particularly with the, the two of us. Yeah. On this, but with everybody. And I think maybe somewhere where what you're saying comes in is like, I. I think Jessica, my character, is a little more equipped, ultimately, to deal, like, she, I think she's a little more, like, uh, I don't know, she's better at taking care of herself, and I think some of that comes from, like, even though she's also in their circle, she doesn't have, like, the millionaire fathers that they do, or, like, or she's going to FIT and, like, is having to kind of make a career for herself instead of like, well, I'll just sit around and deal drugs or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But she's a bit more aware of, of privilege than I think the other two characters are. There's a- uh, Removed from it or something. Yeah, maybe I would say that you guys, I mean, now we're gonna get into it, guys. <laughs> but I would say that you guys are a bit more removed from the, pri in terms of awareness of the privilege. Oh yeah. She is aware of it rather than, than removed from it. I'm, I'm, there's one thing that your character does in it, it, you do it at the beginning and you do it at the end, which is knock the ashtray off. It's just, beautiful moment of slapstick that, that you do twice. I, how difficult is that to perfect as like a, a piece of spontaneity every night, to make that feel spontaneous? Um, I don't know, it's, it's, Anna Shapiro was always saying she can't believe when people are surprised by that. <laughs> like, you know, I don't want to give away a big thing, but yeah, there's this, you know, it's kind of, you learn that I'm a bumbling asshole very quickly mm -hmm. and <laughs> that anything will go wrong, you know, if I'm near it. And um, yeah, there's this big surprising moment in the second act that she's always saying, I can't believe when people gasp when that happens, but it's, I don't know, it's just, but I don't know, to answer your question in a more technical way, it's just kind of, you know, hoping that people aren't three steps ahead, but the play is kind of built that way. You know, the writing is just so strong, it, it just kind of works. Well, I, I guess that's what I was curious about, was the technical aspect of that as a performance, not just the, not just the story and people responding to the story, but how do you do, how do you make something spontaneous every night. What about rehearsing a play allows you to then perform it in a way that feels spontaneous? Huh, well, definitely working with, I mean, playing off of each other uh, really keeps it alive. And you know, you get to react to the people that you're on stage with and surprise each other. And you know, I get to defend myself against Kieran, who's constantly like either hitting me He's or- He's constantly attacking throwing me. Throwing something at me. <laughs> yeah, so that keeps, keeps it alive, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and other than that, I don't know, you just gotta like, do a quick bump before you go on stage and just say, <laughs> let's see what happens. Let's see if my body can with withstand this. <laughs> on that note, we have a, a few members of the HuffPost Live community who uh, have some questions for you. Let's right. bring them in. We have Renee Shaw, Stack, and uh, Jacqueline uh, Beauchamp. 
in oh. Los Angeles who uh, just not got a work to ask a few questions. Hey, guys. Hi. Hello there. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Can they hear us? Yeah, they can hear us. You Hi. Can <laughs> Hi, can you hear us? Okay, hello. Hello, everyone. This question is from Michael. Um, any strange, simple pleasures or odd indulgences? Um, for example, I like finding the, on a warm summer night, I like finding the cold spots in the sheets. Do you have anything weird like that? Oh, Jesus, this is going to be tough. What? Um, what? <laughs> it's tricky. I didn't expect I'm this thinking. question, okay? Neither did I. <laughs> um, Jeez. Dig deep, Mike. Just. That's <laughs> uh, not gonna. Um, killing. I like finding it, uh, <laughs> 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 things that don't belong in my house and really killing them. You know. <laughs> you know that moment where you're just like, where the mosquito knows you're trying to kill it. Yeah. And he's like, in this struggle, this dance for his life, and you're all of a sudden like, no, I'm gonna get. You know that. Yeah. Really mm -hmm. I like Mike. that. <laughs> Calm down. That sounds, yeah. uh, that sounds awful. Uh, well, going back to the the, the play, <laughs> Karen, because you because you were in Margaret, you worked with uh, Kenneth Lonergan in two thousand six. What's your relationship with him been like since then, or since Rory was with him? Uh, and you can count on me. How's he been a part of your life, and how did this come to you? Um, I after that I did. I, I, uh, Kenny Kenny's a friend of mine, but I don't really know. I've known him for. Years, I don't know. I did. I did a production of This Is Our Youth in London like twelve years ago, mm -hmm. um, and since then I just became a fan of his work. Like you, I don't know if you guys have read like you. I know you've read a lot of his other stuff. Yeah, so I just became like a real big fan of his work. And anytime I heard his name, it was like I just want to go after that. I find myself not really um, pursuing a lot of work from most people. But whenever I hear his name, it's like yeah. yeah, where can I fit in and how often? Right. So. Absolutely. Do you, do you mean you don't pursue a lot of other work? I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. Stepped into that one a little. Yeah. Bit. Sorry. Sometimes I'm, yeah, I did. I sort of <laughs> tripped in. I don't know. I just don't get excited about too much. But whenever I hear his name, like I want to, I want to try and work with him on anything I possibly can. Mm -hmm. Tavi, was it difficult for you to to get this role? You you sort of after Rookie Mag, you're just starting to get into performing, and this is a pretty big uh, production to jump into. Yeah. Um, well, I guess the like we did the show at Steppenwolf in Chicago before coming here. And the same week that I got the play to read for, to, uh, to possibly audition for, I was like doing a workshop at Steppenwolf and I just liked it so much. And I was like, yeah, I could come back here for three months every day and not deal at all with whatever uh, doing it on Broadway would be like. Um, <laughs> I guess, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't, you know, I really liked this girl, this character, and I felt like I knew her and I could be her and... Um, I just wanted to like insert myself into the world of this play. Mm -hmm. how, what was it like working with Anna, Anna Shapiro, and how do Kenny and Anna Shapiro work together? Uh, oh. um, <laughs> Anna, for any of you? Anna said that normally when she works with a playwright, they like they only agree like seventy five percent of the time, but she and Kenny like have the same interpretation like ninety percent of the time. Hmm. Um, so I'm just like, gonna okay. cough it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no! What's the professional thing to do? I was giving you the sign to keep going. <laughs> to no. pretend it's not happening? Oh, oh sorry. Absolutely the professional Not to be thing like, to oh do. my god. <laughs> um, you want, I'm gonna go. You want anything? <laughs> Can I get you something? No, it was actually water would normally be the thing, but yeah. that's what I was choking But on. that's the oh, problem. And maybe get me some food. Right. I'm not sure how you not choke on water. Was the answer boring and that's your way of... <laughs> 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 they were like, oh, percentages. <laughs> <laughs> <She's> like, <"Tap." laughs> um, could you repeat the answer? Because I liked it. <laughs> no, just yeah. Kenny and Anna. Um, I mean, it was... <laughs> no, that was an honest cough. I, I believe you. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I suddenly yeah. became, like, took the reins with this one. Um, there, because someone yeah. had to take the reins. The one who's supposed to clearly <laughs> went off course with his cough. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Where are we going, Tavi? Okay, so Anna and Kenny, uh, <laughs> like I think, had a the same interpretation of the writing most of the time. But what was so great with Kenny was that he wasn't like he was able to kind of step away from it and be like, "This is this thing I made. I don't totally know what it means either." Mm -hmm. And then Anna could bring her insights, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I don't know. I think I don't know. I just felt very safe with Anna too. She's a mom, but help. <laughs> Is it difficult doing this doing this play every day? Do you guys feel a little? Do you guys feel run down? Do you get run down doing it? I, um, 
always exhausted after, and we're at the end of the week now, so I'm right. white. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. But uh, when we're on stage, I'm having the best time. I'm having a lot of fun. But then after the show, I'm just, I'm a zombie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the thing you asked about, like, the spontaneity, um, I mean, one, I don't know, it's like you spend all this time setting the show in regards to just, like, who your character is and what how things should basically unfold. But, like, Kenny kept saying to me, like, you actually don't know what's going to happen every night because you don't know what Michael's going to do and you don't know what the audience will be like. And so that kind of keeps you on your toes. Have you noticed uh, audiences having different reactions to different aspects of the play? Mm-hmm. I only got to see it once and I was so fascinated by how warm and receptive the audience was, including myself, but I, w- mm-hmm. I was like dying to see it with an audience that might have been colder and not have ah. been responding, just because I was wondering what they wouldn't respond to. Yeah, it's interesting. <coughs> I don't know, it kind of depends on weird little things like the size of the audience, you know, or like what day of the week it is, or yeah. like what kind of mood they're in or something. Yeah. But if it's raining out too or something, yeah, stuff, like weird, weird stuff little like factors. That. Yeah. Weird variables, but like for the most part, it's just such a well-written play that for the most part the response is general you know the, the story is told and it, it the spell is cast no matter what's going on was there footage of previous any of the previous actors doing the play that you went back and looked at or no, anything no 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 none no. of that and there actually there's an audio uh, version of the play from a couple of years ago with the original cast yeah, that I really want to listen to you listen to it i remember i was waiting till after this to oh do really it. Yeah. i listened to it actually kieran and i did this play 2 years ago and i when we, when i was just trying to learn my lines still when we were at the point where we were like studying on the train and like you know rehearsing yeah. i downloaded that so i could just listen to it as i was like falling asleep and just kind of try and get it into my head. But then I thought, oh, that's way too weird. It's like affecting how I'm thinking yeah. about delivery and stuff. So I and it, was it Mar- and it was Mar- it was Ruffalo who did, yes. who did your part, yeah. right? Right, right. So that would have been, because to- he has such an odd cadence and like a It was a totally different, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Would, I would really worry, about, if I was in that, I would totally worry about getting into the, like, the way that Mark talks. Yeah, I mean, the, ver- the version that's on tape is like a reunion thing that they did like three years ago or, yeah. whatever, or something. So it's, it's not like when they were in it. So it's kind of a revisiting for them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, it definitely, it, it can throw you off. To me, my sort of fear is that like Kenny, Courtney and Kenny, they, they were all great. All three of them were so good that like, I'm afraid of listening to it and like hearing some wonderful ideas and choices yeah. of Josh Hamilton. Right. And then being like, I'm going to steal that or always right. be aware that that's his or something. So right. I'm going to do that later. I don't and want then like, of course, smart. trying to steal a thing that another actor does is never going to work the way that you would hope it does. Now I'm just, yeah, imitating somebody who's good. Yeah, it's not, it's not <laughs> right. the same. Here in as Josh Hamilton, as Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tommy, there is, uh, there is rumors in the news recently that apparently Emma Watson asked you to edit her UN speech. Is that true? Um, she, I've, she like sent me, um, I don't think she asked me to edit it. I remember like an email that I, it was like while we were in the middle of previews and I remember being like, it's so cool that she's doing this, but I can't uh, deal with it now. <laughs> and then I watched it, and I was like, it's great. She didn't need my help. Um, Who's she talking about? She gave a speech about feminism. She's a UN oh. ambassador now. And it was really good. Wow. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know. I wish I had a, you should have like a stance on a rumor. I don't really remember what happened. You don't have to have a stance on it. It's just a, it's just a question. You worked with Emma on uh, This is the End, right? Yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't know the UN was getting into dabbling in feminism now. That's kind of cool. That's cool news. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'm sure Finally. It's, I'm sure it's a dabble and not like a head first rush into okay, it. Like, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're just, like, we'll give it a shot. They're just putting their tippy toes in the water, testing yeah, it. See where this goes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Michael, right. you're you're it's wasn't it rumored that you were gonna be a part of the Ghostbusters about a part of Ghostbusters 3? I think it Paul was Faye? rumored. Yeah, I think it was. Think Are those weird? I'm always curious about that because there were so many rumors about that sequel in particular. Yeah. Did any of them ever have any basis? Had anyone ever approached you? Or no. was it just simply, we'd no. love to have Michael Sarah involved? I don't know exactly who said it, or it was probably just some kid wrote it on the internet or something. <laughs> I don't know exactly where it came from, but I never was spoke to anyone real about it. Yeah. What do you yeah. think about the, the, the new uh, news that Paul Figg's taking it over? And oh, they're doing it? I yeah. didn't know about that. Oh, oh, of course you don't know about it. You're just doing a play every day. <laughs> <laughs> what, Paul Feig is doing Ghostbusters. Are you I with don't like know, a younger I'm not generation? Go over the news for you right uh, now. Oh, sorry. I didn't. No, well, you that brought either. it up. Yeah. I mean, I'm... that's true. Yeah, he's doing. He's, do, he's doing. Uh, Ghost, but he's doing a new Ghostbusters with an oh. all-female cast. Oh, okay. Or I guess all women doing it. All right. What's it called? <laughs> Ghostbusters <laughs> reboot. Cool. 
Uh, it was Karen, the UN's doing since they're dabbling in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a partnership with the UN and Emma Watson. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, and Ken, Kenny has a new movie coming up. Are you? Do you have any involvement in the in the new movie with Matt Damon? Oh, he does. That's right. No, he told me that the other day. He said they're, they're going to be scouting locations for a movie, and I said, "Great, who am I playing?" And he's like, "There's no part for you." <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm out. Were you were you bummed out when uh, Margaret wasn't being released for so long? We I asked we asked Anna Paquin about it when she was here, and she said it was just like she thought that she was just going to have to hold on to the experience of shooting it itself rather than ever getting to see the film see the light of day. Yeah, I mean, sort of selfishly. Like I, I just had a really good time doing it, and I knew eventually I was going to see it. And I'd actually seen an early version before it came out, so as far as the release and stuff, I don't really care. Like, I got to do it, and I got to be in it, so I don't really care. That's just my position on it. I know Kenny really wanted it out there. He wanted people to see it. He was working really hard on it, but, you know, I did it. I don't know. It's done. I don't know. Do you think that's why you stick... Do you, you do a lot of theater? Because it, you, you just are doing things for the experience rather than for the sort of... Being immor- immortalized with I a. Guess I don't. I don't think that that's part of my job. Like I've heard of some actors that get like upset if their movie doesn't do well or something. I don't understand. I never understood that. It's like that has nothing to do with your job. Like mm. you, your job is to do the movie, and then just hopefully you're satisfied with what the finished thing is. Mm-hmm. And then how well it does or how many people see it has nothing to do with me. At least that's how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and a play. And a play too. Like I want people to show up and see the show because I think it's a good show and they like it, but if it's not selling well, it also has nothing to do with me. But it is selling. Like. This show, it the is, play yeah. is selling incredibly well And it's right getting now. a really nice response. That's that's all bonus. That's great. Yeah. And people seem to really like it. And when we get like that's a great. quiet audience, on other shows I've done, when, it, then when it's quiet, it sort of means like maybe it's off or it's not going so well or they're not into it. But this show, if they're not very, if they're not laughing very much or they're not very responsive, they're quiet because they're listening and paying attention. It's just a different audience. Yeah. We've yet to have an audience that felt they don't they're yeah. not responding. There will be like no laughs, but then at like a really sad moment, there will be like, oh. right. I mean, not <laughs> that. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> just, <laughs> just groans. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, just like an audience it's of Tim bro. the Toolman <laughs> Taylors watching This Is Our Youth. <laughs> well, there was that one part where we had that line. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> where I was like, oh, I just look back on them with this oh, longing. Right. Yeah, yeah. And this woman went, she was a foot away from us. She was like in the first row. We were right here, and she just went like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the sheep in the front row. Have any of you ever it. come close to breaking when you're doing the play and something yeah. like that happens? Yeah, we did. Me and Kieran lost it one we night. We lost it for a while. Yeah, and we just really and it, and it was like got away from us. Yeah, it was like three whole minutes. Yeah, it was really what? bad. Yeah. What did you do while you were? Were you just laughing, giggling? Ah, uh, yes. Should we say what? Yeah. yeah, you tell. And say, well, what were the stakes? It was for push-ups, right? It was so stupid. We've never done it again. It was. It was. I think it was for push-ups. It was for like a dare. Yeah. Like I dare you to do it like this. Right. 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 Yeah. Because we and were, I, it was like for days, and I was like, of course, never going to do it. And then right. one day, I decided to, it was just he wanted me to deliver it in a really stupid way. Yeah. He wanted me to say, okay, that's it, and yeah, and, and hold your face for like freeze three your seconds. face for a second. Yeah. Yeah, and he did it, and we immediately... It was we the dumbest thing. It was like the <laughs> most unprofessional thing yes. that two people and on we stage look could at, do. And then we couldn't look at each other, and then it was obvious we were trying not to laugh, and then at one point I like saw you trying not to laugh, and I just lost it. And then the audience knew we were laughing, and we just had to like... <laughs> I tried not to look at you, and I, when I looked yeah. back, your face was red, and you just had taken a seat <laughs> yes. to just laugh, and then the audience was just <laughs> laughing at him, laughing. And then it was like <laughs> eight minutes before we could kind of forget that happened. Did anyone on. come up to you afterwards uh, and go, "Don't, don't do that again"? Uh, well, no, we not knew really. not to do that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was so stupid. That was so dumb. Yeah, I mean, like you know, it was. It's fun. It's a fun feeling when you you're kind of you know that you're ruining. He's <laughs> 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 a great theater. You know, but at the same time, we you know you have this responsibility to the people who paid to see it. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was like, okay, we want, and we want to tell them the story. You know, we care about the story. We've all worked so hard on it. So it's this, that's yeah. what's making you laugh, you know, is how inappropriate it is and yeah. how stuck you are. And we've, we, if you break yeah. on other things because something that we can't help, or something fell down and that made us laugh. Yeah, or something, right. that, that's okay, but yeah, it's yeah, yeah, our right. fault. When that we was just, our fault for sure. Just like ruined yeah. a moment in yeah. the play. That was sabotage. Just to make each other laugh. <laughs> yeah. Morons, that's just. Yeah. Well, you guys, you guys make bets with each other or, or dares every now and then. I saw an interview where you were forced to mention Hitler 
in the interview. She wasn't forced to. She, she chose. Was, she dared chose to. to. All right. <laughs> Why did you your hands in has this Has this been brought up before? I thought that was referencing something obscure. No, it was just yeah. a, We yeah. dropped this game after We never played it she, again. I think yeah. she won. Yeah, that's like, right. Well, but yeah. I also what was the game? Let's give the... Yeah. I... Excuse me. Um, <laughs> 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 no, I, um... We were like figuring out uh, phrases where it's like, okay, if you can work in this phrase <laughs> to an interview, so you get five bucks. And um, oh yeah, you got money. No, it was like twenty bucks. You guys, because there were different levels. There was like, if you can put in this word, it's five. Yeah, bucks. we had different can, tiers or a whole sentence. Right, right, and right. Yours was the most expensive. Yours was You're, the highest. Yeah, yeah it was, they, they both jewel. gave me twenty dollars each immediately. Um, but it was uh, to work in the phrase. Some of Hitler's concepts. Yeah, because no matter like, what you put before or after that, it's not going to be good. Yeah, it. Um, <laughs> right. I mean, if you say if you say some of Hitler's concepts were bad, you're nest, well, you're saying yeah. that others were good. Exactly. And vice versa. <laughs> like, you it categorize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the context was also. It was like the interviewer was saying, like, Kieran, how do you sympathize with? Like, how can? You, how did you become <laughs> this sympathy kind question? of horrible character? <laughs> and you were like, Yeah, I mean, I, I have compassion for him. I understand. And I went, Yeah, I mean, it's like with some of Hitler's concepts. And Speaking of but compassion. But immediately, I know. But I also like broke. I mean, it wasn't totally fair because then I explained it to the. That's end. right. We should have had a rule where you had to. You can't explain it. It's a game. Yeah, you had to commit. I don't feel like you. I don't feel like you necessarily broke. It seemed like all of you broke when I saw that, and I. I thought what I saw was they were helping you out completely and immediately bailing you out of having to just own right. some of Hitler's concepts. I know. Yes. Well, well, it was an in-house Steppenwolf thing. thing. Yeah. So they weren't going to like frame us to you know, yeah. like, put they, it on the news. They were not going to headline you the way that I am already writing the headlines. Exactly. Oh, Tabby exactly. Gevinson, some of Hitler's concepts. Right. Repeat oh, right. some of Hitler's concepts. <laughs> That would be amazing if you sat here and repeated some of Hitler's <laughs> concepts. As a phrase. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But we haven't played that game again. That was and that came that came up that afternoon. That mm -hmm. that sentence. It was brand new, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was set there because nobody could. Yeah, ever we say thought it. that it's would impossible. be the yeah. And then you won the game. Now the game's over. It's ruined. That was fun. Uh, we thought of a couple more phrases, but we never did them. What were the other phrases? Inside my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Another difficult that. one to <laughs> Squeeze in there. I mean, how can in you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it kind of works here, but squeeze in there. Sorry. Yeah, but if you're on like I don't know, if you're on like the Today Show, yeah. <laughs> there's not really a good way to. I well, like I'll turn that in. inside my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> really tight. I mean, I just got really emotional. <laughs> just bunched up down there. It's really. I mean, Kenny's writing. Get it, 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 you feel it in your gut. It's inside my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any others? These are amazing. Oh, They're hard to come up with. I don't know. Can you think of one? Can I think of one? <laughs> yeah, we can use it another one. Oh. It's a fine line. It's kind of a narrow bullseye, this game. Yeah, that's pretty tough. Inside my asshole and some of Hitler's concepts are, are, are pretty perfect. Yeah. <laughs> They're the two that we've decided we like. And now we've said them all. Yeah, but, we, but only in the context of it being a game. My relationship with Jeffrey Dahmer. Mm. Ooh, pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, okay. I don't know how that one... You could work that into a net like I don't but have a... The dynamic between Jessica and Warren reminds me of my relationship with Jeffrey Dahmer. Pretty good. <laughs> it doesn't... I mean, you handled I, it well, but we didn't laugh, so it wasn't that it's great. It's not a... <laughs> it has to feel more, um... My son who I abuse. your bad phrase. <laughs> my son who I abuse. Too. <laughs> um, I don't know. Well, uh, I mean, from the start, it's flawed because none of us would have a relationship with Jeffrey Dahmer. That's know? true. That's true. Uh, I want to bring Bracket back in our uh, our community because they have one more uh, question. Uh, which one of you has a question? And go ahead, Renee. Hi, Renee here. So this is for Michael. Um, as a fellow improviser, I'd love to hear your advice on honing my own improv skills. Oh my gosh. Well, try and be better on your toes when someone asks you an unexpected question <laughs> about the small pleasures are that you like. <laughs> Be quick. You gotta be quick. Uh, Renee. Renee. Um, Tammy, are you at this point? Um, are you are you done with fashion? Um, I yeah. I mean, I think like I started rookie when I was fifteen, and so f then throughout all of high school, I would just like focus on rookie. And I don't. I mean, I like clothes still, but I fashion don't is not done with, with her. Sorry, you, <laughs> you can take. You were gonna say that when you can't take the fashion out of the girl. Right. <laughs> Uh, um, inside my no, asshole. I don't, Sorry. yeah, it's inside my asshole. Fashion <laughs> can be anywhere. Uh, <laughs> Where could it be, Mike? Fashion can be anywhere, anytime. 
I mean, you can find inspiration concepts, for anywhere. Instance. <laughs> Karen, people are just tuning in and, and think oh, I just said, They have no idea what's going on. Karen, I, I have to ask, uh, there's a lot in the news about uh, Macaulay this past year. What are your thoughts on Pizza Underground? Um, I haven't fully seen their their actual show now because I saw it when it was they were sort of experimenting and it was like a four-minute show. It was like a four-minute long joke and it was like funny. And then now they've, they're touring with it and apparently the whole show is like an hour long. But I haven't seen it yet. I'm, I'm hoping to see it like in the next... But there's some so. new jokes now, right? Aren't there? I mean, there's it's like, an hour long now, so there has to be. Well, they, they, they can't have stretched out more... four-minute joke into an hour. Did they just learn more Velvet Underground songs? And there's a Nirvana thing. Remember, Sean was telling us they do a thing now where they take Nirvana songs and just make them past tense. Oh yeah, <laughs> they just past tenseify Nirvana songs. How does that work? I don't know. I haven't seen it, so maybe I'm not the person to even have brought it up. Come as you were, or something. Like, yeah, come really... as you were. Oh, that makes sense. Like that. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Know. Uh, I guess yeah, another weird. question about fashion, Tavi. Uh, so many people kind of, I think, expected you to become the next Anna Wintour with, after question. Rookie Mike. Oh, um, did you have any? Well, you didn't let me finish. Well, you paused. <laughs> I mean, Keep going. Well, I thought you For might effect. answer it at that point. I was trying to put emphasis. Wait, which one um, is you there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is your relationship like with her now? Did she expect you to follow in her footsteps a little bit? I like met her twice. Like that picture was taken, and like that, you know. Um, I don't. I mean, uh, she, there could never be another. She's, uh, you know, she's like such a legend. But also, I don't. Um, that was never like in the cards for me. Mm -hmm. One person is saying right now, I don't know why, but I am loving this. Great. That's know. valuable. Aww. Good. Thanks, Wait, was guys. his icon a pot leaf? That yeah, could be why. That's Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a regular commenter. His name's his name's. He nice says home. that about everything. Great. I don't know why, but this is amazing. It's cool. So I, I'm kind of curious because at this point, and we have to wrap up, but I do I do want to ask. You know, there are people saying that you guys could be expected for Tony Awards when 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 this happens. That the play is so beloved right now, it's selling so well that you could be nominated for some Tonys. I follow the Oscars. Best effort. <laughs> Best uh, effort. <laughs> Most young. Most That's young. a good one. But I follow Smallest the Oscars cast. and people have to campaign <laughs> for Oscars. They have to go out, they have to do a lot of this, they have to do luncheons to win Oscars. Has anyone talked to you about having to do that for Tony's? Do you have to do that for Tony's? Is there any conversations about this? None whatsoever. No. no. I don't feel like that's my job. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Campaigning? Yeah. Kara, are you I'll difficult? kiss a baby. <laughs> am I? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I am. Do you think I am? No, not at all. I'm just, I, I rarely do you get, do you get to hear actors say, I don't do that. That's not my job. I don't know. Everyone tries I to play nice. I, I guess maybe that's a part of an actor's job. I never really saw it as that. I don't know. If that, if that sort of hap that's not the goal. At least that's not the yeah. end goal for me. Yeah. I didn't want to do this play so that hopefully that would come along. But that's, you know, I don't know. Absolutely. I mean, the goal is to make a, a really great play, which you guys have done. And just work hard on it and hopefully try to make it as good as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. that's all. I think it that's is. All, that's all bonus. Thank it's you. fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing it again. Thanks, guys. Great. Thank Thanks you. for being here. That was fun, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we got a lot of Hitler's concepts inside my asshole out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, think we, I think we really made it happen. Uh, for more about This Is Our Youth, which is now playing on Broadway, check out the links in our resource well below, and do go check it out. It is a really phenomenal, phenomenal play, and if you don't know who Kenneth Lonergan is, you should. Stick around. There's a lot more coming up here at HuffPost Live.